Good morning, everybody. Hopefully we have addressed our technical difficulties. I feel like I'm saying that a lot lately. Um, happy World Otter Day. We are celebrating World Otter Day today at our ex otter exhibit with one of our keepers, Christy, and of course our three river otters, uh, we, Danny, Duncan, and Donut. Um, so I am going to turn it over to Christy, who is right here, and our friends. Hi everybody, uh, thank you for joining us today at the Buttonwood Park Zoo. Um, so here we have our two male river otters, Duncan and Donut. Uh, both of these guys are 10 years old. They came to us from um, other zoos. Um, actually, both of them came from zoos in Pennsylvania. Um, so these guys are river otters. Uh, they are found in North America. They are one of 13 species of otters found in the world. Um, there are about seven subspecies of river otters, um, but North American river otters are um, only found in North America. Um, so these guys are probably one of my favorites to work with. So they are a mustelid. So they're in the mustelidae family or the weasel family. Um, and so the characteristics typically found in the weasel family are going to be a long um, streamlined body, which you can see them swimming around in their pool. Um, they also have very dense fur, um, which you can probably see a little bit there. Um, and they also have scent glands um, at, the, at the base of their tail. Um, so these guys are in the weasel family. These guys are semi-aquatic animals, um, so they do spend time both on land and in water. They are aquatic predators, so they do pretty much hunt and look for prey around water. Um, so their habitat is, of course, going to be um, waterways. So any permanent um, body of water, and they can be found both in freshwater and marine environments. So these guys can be found in lakes, they can be found in rivers, estuaries, marshes, coastlines, um, so anywhere where there's a permanent body of water. Um, and they also need very clean water. So that's one of the big important things with river otters is that they need to have clean water. Um, they are sensitive to pollution. Um, and that's something that, thankfully, with the Clean Water Protection Act is one of the reasons why these guys are actually rebounding. So these guys are not, um, they are not endangered. They are species of least concern. Um, like I said, they are found in North America, so that means Canada and the United States. They are found both on the West Coast and the East Coast. Um, they are actually managed pretty well um, through the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Um, they are an actually important um, fur bearer species, so they still are trapped in most, in most species. So these guys, um, the other big part or the other big reason why these guys were endangered was for their fur. So these guys were actually hunted um, and trapped in the about 1800s. So these guys were extirpated through most of their range, but, but they did through um, reintroduction programs, they have made a comeback as well. So like I said, these guys um, typically are still trapped in a lot of states, but they're highly regulated. We did have a question about these two. Where did they, we get them from? Did they come from the wild or yeah, another so zoo? so both of these guys came from other zoos. Uh, they came from uh, zoos in Pennsylvania. So I believe one of them was a Pittsburgh Zoo and the other one was the Erie Zoo maybe? Um, so there are two zoos in Pennsylvania they came from. These guys are part of the species survival plan. So they do, they are part of the breeding program um, through AZA. Do you want to talk a little bit? We are able, luckily, in this spot to be able to really see them swimming underwater. Maybe yes. talk a little bit about some of their adaptations yeah. that help them that we could see. So these guys are both adapted for land as well as water. So 
They do have a nice dense fur. Um, that fur is waterproof. It helps keep water away from their skin. These guys um, also have webbed feet. So if you look at, try, maybe try to get a good view of I'm their feet. I'm trying to get their feet as they paws, jump off. They have webbing in between. Um, so they are excellent swimmers. If you watch them swim, when they do a slow swim, they will paddle um, with their paws. Um, if they want to do a very fast swim, they will use their tail to help propel them through the water. Um, and the uh, their tail on land also serves as a purpose. It actually helps them balance. These guys are agile on land as well. They're, they can run pretty fast, about up to uh, 15 miles per hour. Um, they're great climbers. They also slide and bound on land as well. Um, and they're just a really fun, high energy otter. And that's the other thing. They are high energy or have a high... Um, metabolic rate um, and so these guys do need to eat a lot um, and that high metabolic rate is also an adaptation so they're going to produce a lot more heat and that heat's going to help them stay warm um, with their nice dense What fur. are you feeding them right now? Um, so right now, so these guys are carnivores so right now I'm feeding them fish. Fish is a big bulk of their diet. Here at the zoo we feed them herring and capelin um, as well as smelt. Um, but these guys out in the wild they will eat fish as well as Again, anything around the aquatic environment. So they'll eat small amphibians, turtles. They will catch birds on occasion, small mammals, uh, crustaceans, crayfish, crabs, mollusks, clams. Um, so they'll eat just about anything they can catch. And how long can an otter live? So in captivity, these guys can get into their early 30s. So about the average age is about 20, maybe 21. In captivity, I'm sorry, in the wild, it's actually gonna be less than that. So probably about up to 13, maybe 10 to 13 years in the wild. Excellent. How long can they hold their breath? Uh, so these guys do a pretty good job at holding their breath. They can hold their breath for up to eight minutes. They can dive down to about 60 feet and they can swim about maybe like six miles per hour. And will they swim year round in the winter and the summer? They are, yes, they are active year round. Um, in the winter time, they will have holes in the ice that they can use um, and stay active in the water. Um, they also do use other animal lodges like beaver lodges, for example. And sometimes in the winter, they will um, have access to the water through beaver lodges as well. And in the wild, did you say what their diet is in the wild? I did, yes. Um, but I can say that again. So these guys are carnivores, so they do eat other, or hunt for other animals. They usually try to ambush those animals. Sometimes they'll do a chase, but, but for the most part, um, they'll try to grab them as fast as they can. So their main diet is gonna be things like fish and crayfish, um, but they will also eat amphibians, turtles, um, some birds they can catch, some small mammals. Um, uh, clams, mollusks, anything about anything that they can catch that's aquatic. Tegan had seen otters at another zoo up in a tree. Do they like to <laughs> climb trees a lot? They do, believe it or not. These guys are excellent climbers. Um, so here at the zoo, our guys will see our guys climb. No, they, don't, they don't go so high, but our zoo, at our zoo, they will climb the tree that they have in their exhibit as well. So they're pretty good climbers. Okay, Christy, can you tell us about their individual personalities? Yeah, you want to tell us about sure, their individual I can, personalities? I can tell you about their individual Getting questions from the audience. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got a question. Okay, uh, so yeah, so this is Duncan and Donut. Um, this is Donut right here in the front. He is definitely our feistiest um, honor. He is always food made, motivated. He's typically the top the top otter um, in uh, on our exhibit. Duncan is our other guy. He's the smaller guy in the back. Uh, he is definitely our, we call him our peacemaker. He's usually just gets along with everybody. He's happy-go-lucky and just loves to, to hang out with the other otters. So he's more of our quiet peacemaker. And do you want to talk a little bit about um, caring for otters? What kinds of training you do with them and what's yeah. important to take care of them? So these guys are lots of fun to train. Um, like I said, they're high energy animals. Um, so we do do training at least one to two times a day. We do focus a lot on those husbandry medical behaviors so these guys can get their injections through voluntary behavior. Um, they do open mouth. We can get a weight on them every time we need one. 
Um, so I'll do a lot of training that way. Enrichment is huge for these guys. We like to keep them actively um, searching and enriched and learning in their environment. Um, so we do provide them with enrichment probably about three times a day. Um, they love to dig in mulch piles. We'll give them um, different kind of um, boomer balls and things to hide their food in so they get to work to get the food out. They love scent enrichment as well. So we'll put different kinds of scent throughout the, um, the exhibit. Always trying to make different stimuli available to them. It looks like, oh, they're coming back. <laughs> All right, if we have any other questions about otters, or maybe if you could tell me a little bit, because today is World Otter Day, in general, you said there are multiple species of otters in the world. Yes, How are right. otters doing? What can we do to help them? Yep, so there are um, 13 species of otters in the world. Um, the biggest threats for uh, river otters are is huge, huge, is um, ha habitat destruction as well as um, clean water. So that is really important for these guys and other um, otters in the world. So making sure that these guys, we keep our waters clean, no pollution. We try to put, uh, conserve their habitat around surrounding those areas. Honestly, one of the things that also helped them too was um, actually protecting beaver areas and letting beavers um, come back. Beavers coming back helps them actually create better habitats for otters. Um, so that would be the two, the two big things, is clean water and habitat conservation. Excellent. All right. Well, they are so much fun to watch. They are, they're, they're a lot of fun. And I would say of, of something we've been getting asked sometimes with our closure, you know, are there animals that are impacted by not seeing visitors? I would say these are an animal that do enjoy the activity of having visitors on site. <laughs> they're always interested in what's going on around them. So I know they will be excited to see everyone they back will. on They'll site starting excited. this weekend. It's just like we are, I cannot wait. Yeah. Hey Christy, have you ever had babies or are you gonna have babies soon? <laughs> Do we have a breeding program with these guys here at the zoo? Yep. So like I mentioned earlier, these guys are part of the um, species survival plan. So they are part of the uh, breeding program um, through AZA. So Danny, our female, has had about three or four um, litters throughout her life. She currently will not be um, breeding anymore, but our males are still able, potentially able to go ahead and, and breed at other institutions. And um, personality-wise, or just in general, do they live together in groups in the wild? Do they fight? Do they get along? Yep, so these guys, typically, you can find them solitary, but a lot of times, you, if you find groups of otters, you'll find a mom um, with her offspring. So typically, you'll see maybe about, you know, about on average, the moms do have about two to three pups, though they can have up to six. Um, they typically will stay with their mom for six, six months to possibly a year. Um, so they do stay with mom for quite a while. So typically out in the wild, you will see that grouping. There also have been male groupings as well, um, as well as juveniles too. But a lot of times you will see them solitary. Okay. All right, so I wanna thank everyone for joining us today for this virtual keeper chat. And again, happy World Otter Day. Thank you, Christy and Danny and Duncan for joining us. We are looking forward to seeing everyone on site. You can check out our website for all the details about reopening. Um, in the meantime, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday and we will see you again tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.